A very warm welcome to St Luke's Church in Burton as we're going to celebrate a Eucharist for this, the fourth Sunday of Advent. So let's go inside and worship together. Welcome to you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And on this fourth Sunday of Advent, we light our Advent ring. We have this Advent ring to remind us of the coming of Jesus, the light of the world.
We light this candle to remind us of Mother Mary, who told God that she would obey. People of God, prepare. God above all, maker of all, is one with us in Christ. Maranatha, come, Lord Jesus. God, the mighty God, bends down in love to earth. Maranatha, come, Lord Jesus. God with us, God beside us, come soon to the world he has made. Maranatha, come, Lord Jesus. We are God's children, we seek the coming Christ. Maranatha, come, Lord Jesus. And our prayers of penitence. When the Lord comes, he will bring to light the things now hidden in darkness and will disclose the purposes of the heart. Therefore, in the light of Christ, let us confess our sins. Father eternal, giver of light and grace, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in what we have thought, in what we have said and done, through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We have wounded your love and marred your image in us. We are sorry and ashamed and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and lead us out from darkness to walk as children of light. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the God of all healing and forgiveness draw you to himself and cleanse you from all your sins, that you may behold the glory of his Son, the Word made flesh, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the collect for today. God our Redeemer, who prepared the Blessed Virgin Mary to be the mother of your Son, Grant that, as she looked for his coming as our Saviour, so we may be ready to greet him when he comes again as our Judge, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We now have our first two Bible readings. A reading from the second book of Samuel. Now, when the king was settled in his house and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See now, I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that same night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan. Go and tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day, but I have been moving about in a tent and a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel, whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep, to be prince over my people Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel and will plant them, so that they may live in their own place and be disturbed no more. 
and evildoers shall afflict them no more as formerly. From the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel, and I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. Your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading comes from Romans 16, verses 25 to 27. The final doxology. Now to God, who is able to strengthen you, according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages, but is now disclosed and through the prophetic writings is made known to all the Gentiles, according to the command of the eternal God, to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory for ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the Gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favoured one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favour with God, and now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord, let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. On this last Sunday of Advent, our attention shifts to Mary, the mother of our Lord. We know the story, rehearsed in countless nativity plays. In fact, we know the story so well that we often miss many of the important details and perhaps don't think about who Mary actually was and what her life was like. Mary's life was all planned out. She was to marry Joseph, a respected carpenter and general builder, a good, God-fearing man. Some think that he may have been older and perhaps a widower, who knows. Whatever his status, he was a good man and would make a good husband. All so far, so good. Then the unexpected happens when an angel turns up, and not just any angel, but Gabriel. Greetings, favoured one, the Lord is with you. From that moment, all changes. 
Mary does not know that her life is about to be both completely changed and established forever in the history of humankind. She does not know that her humble beginnings are to be remembered forever as the mother of a Messiah. She does not know that the favour that will come upon her is not personal gain or popularity or privilege. Of course, we have the advantage of knowing what is next, but Mary does not know why an angel would disrupt the normal course of her life with the simple words, Greetings, favoured one, the Lord is with you. It's no wonder that she was perplexed and pondered, terrified, might have been a better description. I can imagine her thinking, am I favoured? Is God with me? What will this favour be? Very significantly in Luke's account, Mary speaks. In Matthew's gospel, Mary is talked about. In Luke, she is talked to and she talks back. But in Luke, she, uh, women speak a mere 15 times and only Mary is given a full speech. This is what we now know as the Magnificat. Mary, the mother of Jesus, is often considered Luke's model of a obedient, contemplative discipleship. She's celebrated for her submission without noticing the social and physical strain that would come for a poor pregnant girl in ancient Palestine. Imagine the life of a young girl on the cusp of marriage. Mary was most likely a teenager as girls married early in that culture. In a small town of Nazareth, her job would have been to keep house for Joseph, bear him children, preferably sons, to keep the family trade going and to help with all the jobs that needed doing in such a place at such a time. That is what Mary would have been brought up to do and how she thought her life would pan out. But it's very easy for us to romanticise Mary's life and see her as some sort of perfect woman, like you see in stained glass windows. But that would be to ignore the complexities of pregnancy in the ancient world. Imagine Mary's pregnant body continuing with the rhythms of a fishing community, cleaning, slicing, preparing. Imagine a strain on her back as she carried water from the well. Imagine the swelling of her feet as she planted and gathered the harvest during the later stages of pregnancy. Imagine the sweat dripping from her brow as she gathered grain and kneads it for the evening meal. Life would not have been easy. And that is before the ridicule and the shame for being unwed and pregnant. The communal lessons and norms of piety, submission, hospitality and homemaking with the expectation of marriage would have framed her life. Shame and self-doubt would have made her life even harder. Her choices were very limited in such a world. There is one part of her story that probably all of us miss. Before she says yes to Gabriel and therefore to God, she is blessed. In Luke's gospel, the willingness to trust the promises of God is the mark of discipleship. And so Elizabeth believes that even though she's ordinarily too old to have a child, she will nevertheless have John. And the disciples believe that they will fish for people. And the repentant thief believes Jesus is innocent and asks for his blessing and so on. Mary too believes God's promises. But what does Mary believe? Yes, she believes Gabriel's announcement that she will bear Jesus. But even before that, she believes that God has noticed her, that God favours her, that God has blessed her and has great plans for her. Surely this is at the heart of the Christian life. The first and the most important thing we are called to believe is that God notices favours and blesses us. And once we get that, we can do incredible things. Blessing is a powerful thing and it's rare. We live in a world that seems to work on rewards and punishments. We end up being conditioned to expect people to give us only what we deserve. But blessing operates on a completely different logic. Blessing is never deserved. It's a gift. It shows that someone sees us as worthy and special. It's not something we've worked hard for 
or earned in any way. It's rare and often hard to believe. We see this in Mary. She's perplexed by the angel's announcement that she is favoured by God. What have I done? But isn't that the point? And just what blessing is, unmerited and undeserved. And as the blessing sinks in, Mary is able to open herself up to the work of the Holy Spirit, to use her to bless the whole world through her willingness to bring Jesus to birth and to care for him. It matters that we notice that before Mary says, yes, she is blessed. I think we all have difficulty seeing ourselves as being of being blessed. We feel deep down that we have to earn God's favour, prove ourselves worthy. We wonder if God even notices us, let alone favours us. Our day-to-day lives, however and wherever they are spent, can seem so mundane and hardly worth God's attention. And yet in this story, we hear about God noticing and blessing someone who by all accounts is a nobody. But when this nobody believes God's blessing and accepts God's favour, the world begins to turn around. It's important to recognise that Mary is an example of what can happen when you believe that God notices, favours and blesses you. You might just change the world. On this last Sunday of Advent, with Christmas all almost upon us, we might like to pause and reflect on what has been an unprecedented year and think about how God notices us, favours us, blesses us in all sorts of ways, big and small, and is still with us. With us through pandemics, redundancies, unemployment, bereavement and illness, and all the other uncertainties and pains of life. Just as he was with a young girl in an obscure place under hostile occupation. Yes, God is with us. And the creed. We believe in God the Father, God Almighty by whose plan Earth and heaven sprang to being, all created things began. We believe in Christ the Saviour, Son of God in human frame. Virgin born, the child of Mary, upon whom the Spirit came. Christ, who on the cross forsaken, like a lamb to slaughter led, suffered under Pontius Pilate, he descended to the dead. We believe in Jesus risen, heaven's king to rule and reign, to the Father's side ascended, till as judge he comes again. We believe in God the Spirit, in one church below, above, saints of God in one communion, one in holiness and love. So by faith our sins forgiven, Christ our Saviour, Lord and Friend, we shall rise with him in glory to the life that knows no end. So now let's have our prayers of intercession. We pray in the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ. Father God, we thank you for the hard work of all who have kept our churches alive 
in this unprecedented year. May we recommit ourselves to further Christ's mission in this community, in this country, and across the world. As our time of Advent waiting and reflection draws to a close, prepare our hearts to overflow with joy and thanksgiving for the gift of your Son. And even as we celebrate Jesus incarnate on earth so long ago, help us to be ready for his coming again in glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of grace, be with all who are readying themselves for your kingdom, actively doing your work on earth. And as our country approaches a new political era, be with the most vulnerable in our society. Make the church, our church, ever more faithful to its role as protector of the poor and the marginalised. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of hope, heal the divisions between politicians and people, both in the UK and around the world. And we ask that the urgent need for climate change action may be recognised by all governments, especially the major polluting countries. May we all stand alongside the young people whose future depends on our commitment to change. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of mercy, give comfort to all who are broken in body, mind or spirit, and strength to those who care for them. In this benefice, we particularly think of John and Jill Neal, Margaret Creighton, Doreen Rendell, Toby, Daphne, Lorraine Perdue, Christine, Georgina, Adrian Young, Bill Mather, Patricia and Peter, Becky, Braden, Charlotte Dunhill, Kate White, Anne Ram, Tony Maidment, Tricia Maidment, Penny Bates, Barbara, Avril, Claire, Matthew, Steve and Debbie Plowright, Susanna Fletcher, Jude, Mandy Parker, Vernon, Peter Sherrod, Ben, Matthew, Rosie, John and Rob. And we continue to pray for Nazazine Zagiri Radcliffe and her family. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Be with all those who have lost family or friends and for whom Christmas is an especially difficult time. And we especially think of Meg Stainins, Kirsty McIlworth, David Grenfell Evans, Francis David Barber, and Fred Horton. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of wisdom, 
as the days begin to lengthen. May your light shine on all of us, gathered in church and online today, and upon every person and nation in need today. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And the peace. In the tender mercy of our God, the day spring from on high shall break upon us to give light to those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And as usual, let's offer God's peace to those around us. Or if there's nobody with us, to our families, our friends, our church members. And offer God his peace. Blessed be God, who enthrones us with Christ in the heavenly realms. May we feed upon the bread of God and drink the royal wine of heaven. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice we offer for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his church. Look upon us in mercy, not in judgment. Draw us from hatred to love. Make the frailty of our praise a dwelling place for your glory. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise, almighty God and everlasting Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son. He is the one foretold by all the prophets whom the Virgin Mother bore with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist was his herald and made him known when at last he came in his love. Christ fills us with joy as we prepare to celebrate his birth so that when he comes again, he may find us watching in prayer, our hearts filled with wonder and praise. And so with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your glory and join in their unending hymn of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his commands, send your Holy Spirit. The broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends. And taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again, he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me.
So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence, his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes. And justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with the Blessed Virgin Mary, St Luke, St Michael and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Awaiting his coming in glory, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I'm not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. The bread of heaven in Christ Jesus, given for all of us. cup of life in Christ Jesus, shed for all of us. And a post-communion prayer for today. Heavenly Father, who chose the Blessed Virgin Mary to be the mother of the promised Saviour, fill us, your servants, with your grace, that in all things we may embrace you, your holy will, and with her rejoice in your salvation, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We thank you, Lord, that you have fed us in this sacrament, united us with Christ, and given us a foretaste of the heavenly banquet prepared for all peoples. Amen. And the blessing. The Lord be with you. Christ, the Son of righteousness, shine upon you, scatter the darkness from before your path, and make you ready to meet him when he comes in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be with you and remain with you always. Amen. As we await the promised Saviour, go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. <laughs>